Um, I'm going to start now. Hello and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, January 21st, 2012, and it's a snowy day for some of us here. Our topic today is eFace, uh, electronic family and community engagement, and our special guest today is Joe Matza. I know we've got a great set of, uh, for me, who is a parenting uh, advocate, I am so thrilled to have Joe today, and I'll talk about him just a bit uh, in a minute. Because we're going to put you to get work in a second, and I want to uh, remind you, if you're not here for the first, if you're here for the first time, that that chat function going by really quickly. Don't worry, we are recording this show. We keep the chat log for you with all the links from our show. The, the presenter is shared, and for yourselves, if if someone in the class uh, in the session is uh, sharing a link, we keep all those as well. We'll keep the full Blackboard Collaborate recording. Uh, an MP3 file for audio on your iPod, also an MP4, and we have an iTunes U channel which you can uh, access all our recordings as well. And I know Kim will explain that near the end of the show. So our website is live.classroom20.com, and the archives and resources page is the one where you're looking. If you haven't, uh, if you have to leave during the session, you'll you'll see it, it there. Or if you need someone who's never been to our show and wants to have access to our really extensive uh, amount of resources, that's where we're going to ask you to pop by and take a look. So here's the world map, and now is your challenge. Everyone needs to find that little starburst in the whiteboard tool in the left and grab onto it and show us where you're located in the world. And if you can't make that work and you want to, um, and you can type in the chat as well where you're located. Yes, Peggy, this is the fun part, so everybody has to get going. Shambles is over in Thailand. He's, he's not awake yet to click in his, in, uh, oh, he's using, a, he's using a hand. It's being different today. Thank you. Some people from Canada, I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and Kim is in San Antonio, Texas. And our guest today is from um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So we're a, um, a widespread group, but it's nice to have everybody together. Okay, that fun is now over. I'm going to take away your whiteboard um, access tools, and we're going to talk about the live binder. I said to you a few minutes ago we have our blog or resource. Uh, we also collect everything in a really nice compactor using a live binder. If you haven't seen it before, we're just doing a web tour now to load it up. I'm not seeing it at the moment. Sometimes it may take a bit longer for each of us because of uh, our internet connections. Uh, Peggy's dropped a link uh, in the ch or Kim did dropped a link in the chat as well for the live binder. So if it's not loading up for you, then um, you'll be able to go directly to it in your browser. Great. So I can't actually navigate it because I can't see it. So um, I'm just going to off the top of my head talk about the fact that uh, each uh, show has a separate tab, and you can go back and forth. And under the tab, there's subcategories, and you'll see all the links posted as well. And so, if it's um, not in the live binder, it's also in the blog post on the archives and resources page, so you can access everything. And of course, today my dog started to decide that I shouldn't be talking to you, so I hope you can bear through her um, chatter for a few minutes. And uh, I can't make the live binder work, so let's go back to the slides because we're now going to move on to uh, the poll questions. So now you're going to take that icon on the right and answer. Our first poll question today is, do you use technology to share information with parents and the school community? So a red X if you don't and a green check if you do. And I'll show you the votes in just a few minutes. So if you can't get that X and uh, check, then type your answer in the chat. You're always free to, you know, do whatever works best for you. So I'm just gathering the the votes. We've got a large group here. So I'm about half of you voted so far. I haven't voted. So I'm guilty. I can tell you already that um, by showing you the results here. Over half the people in the, the session are doing it. So, and then we're waiting for a few more people to get, a, you know, really ambitious and vote with us. So, that's our first poll question. Let's go to the next one. Does your school district provide 
school or school district provide online opportunities to solicit feedback with parents. So go ahead and vote. Yes, green check, no red X. So lots of good answers there that show, show them to the world. What were the answers there? Isn't it? Again, the majority in the room are using uh, feedback um, online to connect with their parents. That is great, great news. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next question. Our last poll question today is, do you have a school or district policy that allows you to use social media such as Twitter or Facebook to communicate with parents? So that's we're looking for whether you have an um, acceptable use policy. Yes, no answer, and if not, type them in the, in the chat. It's flying, no, we got a no there in the chat. No, yes, no, yes. I'm still waiting for people to vote here. I'm just going to move on quickly so we can give lots of time to, to Joe. So what are our results telling us? A great majority here don't have a policy. That's kind of interesting and I know it's still a long way to go to get those policies in place. There's some really good uh, ones out there and I I'm, don't know whether Joe can show them, show them but um, I'm sure that we have something in our resources to, to let you do that as well. So okay, we, we finished with the poll questions and now we're going to have a great opportunity to meet uh, Joe Matza, our topic today is e-faced, and our, our show hosts are Kim Case, myself, Lorna Costantini, and Peggy George. And yes, again, a special guest, Joe Matza. And Joe and I met by accident when I found him with a YouTube movie using Ustream with his home and school uh, meetings, and I just went, oh, wow, and that was last summer. And then I thought he did some more innovative things, and it went on and on and on, and we've connected about Twitter channel meetings, and since that time, Joe's worked with... Uh, uh, electronic and family communication has just expanded, expanded. And you know, for his background, I need you to know that he is the, in his fifth year as principal of the Knapp Elementary School in, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's tech savvy, and you'll see why in a minute, and he's child centered, a lifelong learner. And he gained a lot of his experience as a third grade teacher, as a bilingual elementary administrator, a middle school vice principal, and now as a principal at Nav. And uh, he is currently a doctoral learner at the University of Pennsylvania. And guess what? He's pursuing a dissertation topic involving using technology to enhance family engagement. You can follow all his research and other educational ideas on his blog, which is eFace today. Uh, Joe, you're welcome to add any more background information as I turn over the microphone to you. And uh, Give you a bit of a challenge with today's yeah. movie question. Today's movie question. What is electronic what communication is and why is it important for school leaders to use it? Uh, good back. afternoon, everybody. I hear from uh, snowy Philadelphia. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. All right. It, it was um, <clears throat> really interesting reading your responses, you know, in the three poll questions to start off with. I think. Most of us are using technology in some way, shape, or form, um, you know, with our parents on a daily basis at school. Um, it's when we get into the two-way communication, um, soliciting feedback back to the school, where a lot of, including my school district, continue to have um, some policies in place uh, that are rather conservative. And uh, one of the things that I'm trying to uh, begin to accomplish with my dissertation is to take a look at what it means for schools when parents are uh, providing feedback back to the school and schools can build that partnership in person and online. Um, so yeah, we can certainly talk about policies a little bit later, some things that we're doing, but electronic communication and why is it important for school leaders to use it? Uh, I work in a school, uh, there's 600 students, uh, about 75, 80 staff members. Um, we have 20 different languages in our school, the top languages being English, Korean, and Bengali. Uh, and we have a 37% brain reduced population at our school. So um, in the suburbs of Philadelphia, we consider that fairly diverse. Um, and we really have um, needs of all kinds 
from the needs of just shelter and, and home and, and getting kids what they need to, um, to have for school, for supplies, for jackets and whatnot, all the way to, you know, we have the families coming from, you know, million-dollar homes into our school. So there's a wide range of needs there, and um, it's our job to differentiate for our parents and to um, really identify those needs and respond to um, those needs accordingly. Um, so over the last several years, I became principal at this school in 2007. We've, we've built our electronic communications um, pretty much from the ground up. Um, one of the things that we started with was uh, trying to find out who was using computers. You know, we did some surveys, um, we talked to parents, we talked about it at meetings. We really wanted to dig in and when you're, you know, new, a new leader in a building, you really want to get to know um, your stakeholders and get to know where their comfort levels are and, and um, you know, what, how they best communicate. So that's an ongoing process. We started doing that back in 2007, and we continue to do it with, with every meeting as we get to know um, each, uh, each parent. Lauren, am I uh, going to continue to go with the slides here? I'm not sure if uh, there we go. It's the opening slide. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you are on um, Twitter. Is anyone uh, using Twitter in their schools at this time? You can put a yes in the window if you are. Okay. It's like 50-50, maybe a little bit more no's than yeses. We started using Twitter in our schools, and we'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. Um, just at the, at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, we made a real heartfelt effort um, with Twitter. And um, Twitter is the, the most the fastest growing social media in our world today. There's 460,000 signups a day. 70% uh, of those signups are between the ages of 18 and 35. So my question to you um, today is, what is the significance of those ages uh, when it comes to all of these Twitter signups, 18 to 35? Our future, uh-huh, seeing some comments on the left-hand side. Well, we're in, uh, yes, they will soon have kids coming to school. Uh, Katie, you, you hit it, you hit on the head, Katie and Virginia. Um, they are the ages of soon-to-be parents, if not already parents. And if there are that many parents signing up on a daily basis, um, then that really, um, shows me as a principal that I need to continue to expand my knowledge with technology and social media to really respond and to meet them, you know, exactly where they are. Um, so those numbers and those statistics, a lot of those statistics um, I'm putting in my literature review and the dissertation I'm writing right now to really build the case um, for schools to have an e-face strategy. I think it's really important e-face is electronic family and community engagement. And um, there's a lot of wonderful research um, and, uh, you know, for family engagement for schools to follow. Um, and uh, we're going to get to some of that in a little bit. But, you know, social media, this, this slide here really shows a, a wide variety of social media in the world today. And it's, it's overwhelming. It really is. And, um, and I think um, all of us, including myself, you know, when we're starting to use some of these tools and, are asking the right questions, and you know where where do we begin? Um, we began, of course, without technology, and in a meeting, talking to parents, um, asking them what they're using at home. Are they on Facebook? And majority of the parents in my school at least have an account. I'm not sure how often they go in. I I do not uh, Facebook friend my parents. Um, really. Uh, we wanted to talk to them and see how we could best communicate with them. So we started, you know, um, talking with parents in meetings and, and sending surveys home um, via hard copy because we weren't doing Survey Monkeys quite yet. Um, we wanted to kind of build that as we went through. So I think it's really important to put out there at the beginning of this presentation that technology does not replace face-to-face -face communication. I, I just don't see that. I, I think that it helps us provide a tool it helps us um, be closer together when it's difficult, whether for 
um, babysitting needs or you know a family doesn't have a car um, or for time um, and or you know parents working three or four jobs a day and they just can't get to a home and school meeting so we can put it online for them but I think it it helps us and it gives us a bridge to engagements but I don't think technology can be your only engagement okay so um, I'm doing a lot of work with Joyce Epstein and, and um, it, when I'm talking about family engagement, it always goes back to her six types of, of involvement. I'm lucky enough to have Dr. Epstein on my dissertation committee, um, so I'm updating her um, rather uh, consistently on the work I'm doing with technology. Um, her most recent book was published in 2011. It's a handbook for, um, for educators, for parents on family engagement. It's a very thick book. It has a ton of research in it that she's done over the years with her colleagues. Uh, but I page to the back of the book in the index, and um, there are two things that I do not see back there. I don't see the word technology, and I don't see the words social media. Um, so therein lies my work and what I'm focusing on doing on a daily basis in my school and the graduate level. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, at Joe underscore Mazza, um, I'm always trying to share some of those successes that schools are having in engaging families utilizing technology. Um, at the top of the blog, I write a blog at eface.blogspot.com. Um, you'll see at the top of that blog, parenting, communicating, volunteering, learning at home, decision making, and collaborating with community. And those are the areas um, that we try to allow technology to um, create capacity. Um, and support what we're already doing in school and, and out of school. Um, I see Peggy's putting a link up there to um, where you can find some of these things. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the research there, but um, as you're speaking with families and you're speaking with um, teachers and principals and, and schools, I, I think we really have to go back to the research as to um, why this is so, so important uh, for us to focus on family engagement. All right, so how can technology help our efforts? Um, one of the very first things that we did um, was to build a family email list. Um, we started uh, this back in 2007 um, by asking parents to volunteer to be a part of our um, distribution list, so to speak. And uh, we got them at back to school night, which you know we had the most amount of parents there that night. We also began um, getting their email addresses as they enrolled um, in our school. You know, we tend to get um, maybe a, a, a student or two each week, new student at our school. We, we have a lot of new students coming in, so we felt like that was a great opportunity when meeting these families to get their email addresses. Now we've really formalized the process. We provided a form. Um, and every, on the form, it asks for there any email addresses, you know, a mom, a dad, a grandma, anyone that's a part of their family to be on that email list with us. Uh, we do use Google and, and Gmail because it, it talks, it speaks very well with a lot of the other tools that we use. Uh, there are plenty of other options out there, but Google seemed to be something that worked for us. And again, it was free. And um, today we're in the business of um, dealing with budget cuts and whatnot. And, and, um, Anytime we don't have to pay for something, that's a win for us. Um, so the the form that we provide now, and I can send this over to um, Peggy and uh, Lorna and Kim and uh, Tammy later on, but it's really um, simple and it's clear and it has one box per character. You have to uh, remember if you have a school that um, speaks a lot of different languages at home, the letters might not look like the letters you're used to seeing even from your first or second graders. Um, so giving each box its own character um, is important for us to record the email address um, appropriately so we don't miss anyone. So starting with your email distribution list, because that's really going to be the vehicle you use to push out any technology tools that you decide to employ your school. Um, we, you know, I threw something rather quickly together here. Um, about you know how we've grown this tree of our eFace efforts over time. Um, you take a look at the bottom, the root of the tree, the foundation is the ongoing face-to-face two-way planning. And that is you know talking to, to parents, talking to them um, at meetings, talking to them in the school when you see them, asking them for their feedback, their honest feedback. Um, 
you know, as you know, we always greet our parents, but asking them how it's going and asking them some open-ended questions so they can give us that that feedback. And as a principal, I'm trying to do that every day. Um, we're in a very busy elementary school, but but I don't think you can ever be too busy not to consider the feedback from your families. It really helps you grow. Um, so I, you have that uh, email distribution uh, list that's down there that we we talked about, you know, to start with. Um, the family engagement wiki. Um, is something that I'd like to go to at this time just to give you an idea of, of uh, where that started. So I'm going to try and uh, utilize this uh, tool here on the um, application sharing to see if I can get the wiki to show up so I can take you through that. Does everybody see the family engagement wiki on the screen? All right, okay. All right. So um, this is a you know public site. Um, we chose this wiki uh, back in 2008 um, because we felt it gave us an opportunity to have two-way communication. Um, we have parents and teachers and uh, myself um, that do updating on this wiki. Uh, and a wiki is Hawaiian for short and quick. And um, sometimes websites can be rather confusing um, to navigate, to update. So we wanted to um, really make something quick and easy. You see an edit button in the upper right hand corner. For a wiki, all you would do is hit that edit button and your screen turns into a Word document. And you add or subtract anything you want to, and you hit save, and it's and it's already um, updated. So we have certain parents with certain permissions on here that can update certain things. I'm going to take you through some of the um, uh, the pages on the left hand side, but uh, just keep in mind this is our family engagement wiki. This is the tool that we use to um, publicize events and opportunities, as well as archive them. It's also a great tool for new families when they come to your school and they're, they're, they're going to be moving in three weeks, but they just want to get a feel for what your school is and what it's all about. So um, right smack dab in the middle of the page, you'll see our um, Twitter feed. And um, as a principal, I'm walking around the building throughout the day and I usually try to send five to seven tweets um, from classrooms, from events. Last night you see a bunch of pictures from our special picks for 456. We had an upper elementary um, activity night. And um, you will see some pictures uh, in there if you do click on the, the end link there. Um, and that goes back, I think we've sent about three or 400 tweets since the beginning of the year. That goes back. And you can just kind of get a taste. And for a mom or dad that doesn't have a Twitter account, you can click on those links without having to log in and you know, just kind of see what's going on. I think it fuels um, dinner table conversation and it helps uh, uh, teachers be recognized because oftentimes I put teachers' names in there for the great things that they're doing, as well as you know thanking home and school members for the work that they've done. Um, if you look down, it says G Pescator 25. Um, she is a parent who attended my Twitter parent training a couple months ago, and she has started tweeting. She's shared photo albums on our Twitter account. Um, she's really been a great um, partner for me at the school and for our teachers and parents. Um, Mrs. Pescator is a, a fabulous connected parent and um, you know, you have to have parents like that and you have to develop parents like that and, and provide them with opportunities to run with certain things and uh, the Twitter and uh, she does a lot of photography for the yearbook. Uh, she's, she's able to do a lot of different things using some of the tools that we're setting up here. Um, if you continue down underneath the Twitter space, you will see the um, <clears throat> Google Calendar. And again, I, I said earlier that Google speaks so well with all of the tools that we're using. I use the same account for the distribution list in the, the Gmail as I do with the Google Calendar. Um, so it's real easy to update. My secretary um, has access to this. The home and school president has access to this. And I have access to this. And we can post the dates and they show up automatically. Um, later on, we'll get to the mobile app um, that we just put out there about a week and a half ago. 
And uh, that also takes the feed of Google Docs and speaks very well with that, um, Google accounts with Google uh, calendars. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, we, a couple uh, months ago, I had some parents saying, you know, is, is anyone using our family engagement wiki? Um, you know, how do we know? Who are the visitors? So um, I actually found this on Lauren site um, who's visiting us and I, I have I have one on my blog and I have one here now. It's just nice to take a look at every once in a while to say, oh wow, look at that person from um, Caledonia, Ontario or Wainwright, Alberta that checked out our, our site today. And I think um, you know parents and, and kids enjoying seeing that too and and, um, and the conversation it generates. Um, also if you um, go into the wiki options you can see Statistics. I'm not going to go into all of this now. Statistics on a daily, weekly, monthly basis as to how many hits you're getting on certain pages, um, and you can really track how much it's being used by your parents. All right. So that's the main pieces on the front page. Taking a look on the left-hand side, um, we have uh, a volunteer page where we put um, some upcoming events um, that volunteers are needed for, and. These folks are asked to contact Kelly Stevenson um, here, and you can send her an email saying, hey, yes, I'd like to um, volunteer for this event and that event. Um, our, um, you know, academic reports, how we're, you know, how we're doing uh, for the school and how, you know, how our scores have, 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 have gone up and, you know, just giving parents the opportunity to see exactly what they're looking at in terms of our school and, and where our challenges are and where we're working so they can best support us at home. Um, we have um, bully prevention efforts. We are an Alveus bullying prevention school. Um, we're also employing the Peaceful Bus School. Uh, those who are on the um, presentation today that may have participated a couple weeks ago in the PT chat on Twitter, um, we do that on Wednesday nights. We have um, certain individuals um, join us. And Jim Dillon, he's the author of the Peaceful Boss Program, joined us a couple weeks ago. So, you know, it has our rules here. It has um, the numbers that I can call immediately to report any bullying. Um, it has some, you know, some videos, some links that we provide to parents during our Internet safety nights. Um, and we update these, uh, you know, as we get, you know, better sites. So one of the things with this wiki is it's really quick and easy to update and we want it to be an ongoing resource for our parents. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these links. I'll just go through the one, the, the big ticket items for us. Uh, this is where we archive our newsletters. And again, if you're a new parent coming to a school, uh, I think it's really important for you to be able to read those newsletters and, and stay current with uh, what's happening. Um, if you click on the January 2012, you'll see our most recent newsletter. Um, we usually have the, all the items due on the 10th of the month, and that gives my home and school parent. Her name is Mrs. Carvalho. She's fabulous, creative, not only a great cook, but very dedicated to her um, child's education and the well-being of Knapp Elementary School. And she does a wonderful job at um, being creative and putting all of the pieces together on these newsletters and providing something. We did it, um, the office staff and I the first couple of years and to put out something that looks really nice and is inviting and is easy to read takes a lot of time and and um, we're so thankful for a, a parent to uh, to um, join us and help us out with that. Did I see that Mrs. Pescatore just signed on here? I sent her a uh, Twitter uh, message a little while ago. Thanks Mrs. Pescatore for joining us. Um, hello. So she can also uh, chime in at any time on the uh, chat bar to, to talk a little bit more about these things. Glenn, I'm just going through some of the things on our family engagement um, uh, wiki here. Um, of course, there's a meet the principal section, you know, to know a little bit about who the, the principal is at the building. Um, and um, if you go down here to uh, the photo album, uh, this is the part where um, we have pictures that are uploaded to our Google, uh, and Google uses the CASA, but once again, we're utilizing the same Google account for our email, for our calendar, and for our pictures. Um, so Mrs. Pescatore will go and take, you know, 200 pictures at a, at a special event, and she'll post them right up there um, into the Google account, and then we will find them embedded here on this site, and we'll also We'll also be able to see them on our, our mobile app. 
We also have a TV that the home and school was kind enough to purchase for us in our, our front lobby. And um, that TV also plays a slideshow throughout the day, so kids and parents and community members um, can see all the, the wonderful things going on at the school. Um, we had um, mom breakfast morning, dad donuts with dad, and, and for parents to come in there and see themselves with their kids on the TV, it, it's, a, it's a cool thing. Um, of course, we have a nap in the news section. Uh, this is, you know, when we um, find ourselves in, in the newspaper and celebrating the efforts of students and teachers and, and parents. We try to get them right up here so, um, you know, parents, in, in case they miss that, they can kind of take a look at um, what they might have missed and read the article and, and uh, just stay current with the, with the elementary school. All right. Um, are there any questions on the family engagement wiki before I move on? I was going to the app. I didn't, uh, didn't talk about that. This is uh, this is new. Um, Webmobi.com um, is where you start, and uh, this is really if you can update a wiki or. or uh, you can create your own app. They allow you to choose a, you know, a URL um, for your app. And we started really basic with the contact us page, with the, the bullying, the sending an email, embedding in the calendar. Um, and it really walks you through fairly easily. I think I, I wrote a blog last week on it. Um, and it takes you through some of the work that we did uh, in putting that together. And again, it doesn't take very long. It, you know, you just kind of have to read through the directions. Their tech support was very helpful. I contacted them a couple times just for clarification's sake. Um, but if you have an iPhone, um, you know, like I do, like a lot of our parents do, you really just type in nap.webmobi.com and um, this page will come up. And then you can save that to your home page on your app. Um, I don't have another phone, so I'm not sure how to do it on another phone. But um, if you have any questions with doing this, you can certainly uh, reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. Um, if you have a tech person at your school that updates the website, this is a lot easier than updating a website to, to do. Um, I, I think it's just something that we have to take a look at our families and take a look at how busy they are, how many jobs they're working, they're running all over the place. And there are so many people with a cell phone. Um, we had on our event last night, and I looked up, and um, I saw a lot of parents, um, uh, you know, watching their kids, but they were also checking emails, sending texts. They were on these phones constantly. So if I can find a way to get uh, the school onto a platform they're already using, whether it's a cell phone or it's a, on the Internet or whatnot, um, that would be fantastic. So we have our calendar on there. We have a, a lot, some other things. This is just version one. Uh, we plan to talk about this at next week's home and school meeting, talk about uh, what features they, our parents find um, most accommodating, and talk about maybe some features we'd like to add in the next, um, in the next version when we do decide to update that. All right. So I, have a, I see Aaron asked a question about uh, excluding those that don't have the devices, and I think that's a great, uh, great question for us. Um, one of the uh, things that we really have to take a look at is access. And when I talked to Dr. Epstein about uh, some of the work I was doing, that was one of the first things that came out of her mouth was to, you know, how do we make sure that um, as many parents as possible are, you know, utilizing some of the tools that we're using on a daily basis. Um, we have over 500 email addresses that we send our, you know, Gmail um, e-blast out to. But there, we also know that we have 37 hard copy parents that we send. Everything that we send with an email, we send with a, we home a hard copy for those parents in a sealed envelope, um, home with their parents. And that number has dropped, you know, as more and more parents um, have um, taken technology, have found ways to get technology in their homes, you know, at a, at a, uh, a discounted rate or whatnot. I know Comcast uh, out near us has a 9.95 a month now for um, those that find themselves in a in a, in a financial hardship. Um, so we're we're always looking for ways to get them connected, um, and um, that's that's one of those things. But 
it's 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 always going to be different for everybody, and every every school is different. I think you really have to know your school, know your population, um, know who's utilizing the technology, um, know who has access to it, and um, I, I think it's always a concern. And I think that uh, we have to be talking to those parents face to face to find out if they can't access it, then how are we going to get uh, these opportunities are providing all the other families them opportunities in maybe a different way. Um, I, I think trying as hard as we can to look at the um, communications from their, their lens. And is it a communication issue? Is it a translation? They can't read the words. If you look on every, um, go back to the beginning on our, our wiki here, on the upper right hand corner of our pages, you see the Google Translate. And uh, that's something that, you know, again, it just takes a couple seconds to copy and paste um, that up there. And we try to get as many, you know, Google has, they're adding a different, more languages every day. Um, and just to have those opportunities and, and not put this at the bottom of your page, you know, where they can't read it and they give up if they can't read it, but put it right up at the top, right where they can see it and maybe click on their language and say, okay, I'm speaking Korean here. How am I going to read what's on this page? And, um, you know, with a click, you make them feel a whole lot more comfortable with participating and engaging with what you're sharing with them. Um, and I and I think that's one of the keys is to help your parents feel uh, appreciated, feel like you care about them, you're doing everything um, you can to help them, no matter what language they speak, no matter um, what their income level is, where they live, um, and how much they can provide to the school. You know, we have parents. Um, like Mrs. Pescator, they probably put in 20, 25 hours a week for NAP Elementary School, and then we have some that we don't see all year. But um, we're hoping that you know we can build their participation, and some folks um, participate a little bit, but maybe they might donate a lot. Some people don't have the money to donate, but they will participate more. So we know that everybody's at a different place, and, and I think that's why differentiating for our parents uh, much like teachers differentiate for different learning styles in the classroom, I think that um, principals and home and school associations, I think we need to differentiate for all the different families that um, come back. So, Nora, I'm going to go back to into the slides here. Hopefully I can find a way to do that. Oh, thank you. All right, wonderful. All right, so um, home and school 2.0, that's uh, something that we started uh, doing um, recently, I think this is our fifth or sixth meeting, um, and Home and School 2.0 uh, simply means that we have taken our Home and School meetings, um, the ones that you have at the end of the middle of the month, and you have, we had eight to ten parents, um, mostly the Home and School board sitting around talking, and, and every, seemed like every meeting we would talk about, how are we going to get more people to come to the meeting? How can we engage more people? You know, it's the same people coming, and, and you're so thankful for those people sitting there and, and discussing and, and helping the school move forward and, and connect and whatnot. But um, what else could we do that maybe we weren't thinking of? So uh, my superintendent, Dr. Kirk Dietrich, in the North Penn School District, um, in all of the budget conversations that are going on in just about every school district I know in the, in the country here, um, last year he held a event that the local newspaper hosted on CoverItLive.com. And Cover It Live was um, kind of similar to the Blackboard Collaborate that you're looking at here, um, the interface piece. It was a free tool, and uh, it allowed for participants to chat and whatnot. But it really allowed our superintendent to talk about the budget and talk about some of the things that the, him and the school board were thinking about and some of the changes that um, they were predicting and whatnot. So um, in thinking about home and school, I thought maybe we could uh, find a way to broadcast this in some way, shape, or form. And um, so I talked to the superintendent about some of the tools he was using, because obviously they were going to be approved. Um, and um, we also talked to the Home and School Association, because I think that when you um, record audio, re record video, you have to um, make sure that those folks are comfortable with that. And I, I, I applaud them because they know that uh, participation has been such a, a challenge for us as it is with many home and schools across the country that um, trying something new um, would be you know, beneficial to all of us and maybe we could learn a little bit something and maybe we can measure some results. So um, 
Lorna, we're going to go to that page where that video is now so we can start with the video. I'm sure if I should just click on this and we'll go there. Okay. Should I click on the link? I think Peggy's going to set it up so we can watch the video with Web Tour. Is that okay, right, Peggy? Okay, great. Yeah, and then I'll talk about it in okay. a couple minutes afterwards. Okay, thanks. You know, the state of the school. We talk about some current events. Hi, I'm Joe Manza, principal of Knapp Elementary School. Um, tonight we had our first live uh, web film at school meeting. Uh, we had 17 parents chiming in from their homes, their living rooms, dining rooms, outside on their porches, and uh, we also had 17 people in here. So typically we get uh, 10 to 15 parents a month for our meetings, and tonight we more than doubled that. So in our first quest to reach out to some of our parents and give them more of an opportunity to participate, is a success. We're in a in day and age right now where parents are working more than one job at their home you know, to help their kids get dinner and their homework and there's not a whole lot of time for other things. So we feel that bringing the um, meetings to their homes is something that we could use to generate more interest in um, school events as well as more support, resources, and volunteer efforts. As you saw tonight, we had some parents um, participate and volunteer to be part of the book fair and help with the yearbook. And we had a teacher um, sitting in her home talking to us about how ASPCA week is running this week and also provided a request to home school for a writing essay. Um, that she's going to be doing with her students. There's lots of things that we could be doing um, and using our technologies. Tonight we used um, Cover It Live and we also used Ustream.com. Uh, both of those websites are free of charge. They didn't cost us anything. And we feel it was a success overall for our first effort um, at bringing our families uh, closer to us using the internet. For all of these stories and more, log on to nptv.npn.org for our program and get your fingertips 24 hours a day. All right, so um, if you take a, take a look at that video, um, it showed a couple different things. There's a big screen that we have in the room uh, that we had the broadcast um, coming in from. So that's what we, we were seeing what the parents from home were seeing um, in the, the chat feature uh, that they could type in text and participate in that way. The ones that were on camera were, were the, the actual physical meeting. Um, it was the home and school board, myself, um, and the rest of the parents that joined us. Uh, we've had, we've ranged since we started doing this from, uh, you know, the eight to ten parents coming physically. Um, and every uh, meeting we've had, we've had a lot more parents tuning in from home than in the room. I think our last meeting we had 39 uh, parents coming in from home and 14 in the room. So um, our goal is to get as many different uh, lenses and voices in there as possible. Um, to help the meeting and, and build the um, the information that we share and and, um, and we discuss and the ideas um, that we can uh, implement at our school. Uh, so that's a feature. Again, we use three tools: CoverItLive.com, Ustream.com, and we hosted those because the Ustream provided us the video and audio. Uh, we embedded that into Cover It Live, and then we hosted it on the wiki. And uh, I have to be honest, that, that really took a lot of, of um, time to try and navigate and, and to learn it. Um, that was just something, you know, playing around um, and uh, utilizing some of those tools. Uh, it it's, can be difficult at times. I had some tech people helping me do that. Um, I think if you're looking to employ any of these things, you know, after you've built it and built the readiness and the buy-in from your home and school and your, and your school district, I think you really have to get it straight and, and, and test these tools because the last thing you want to do is be getting ready for a 7 o'clock meeting and it's time for the meeting and um, you have all these parents that are really excited about using the tool but they can't get it to work because of a little uh, tech glitch that could have been prevented earlier if you tested it. So we have spent a good amount of time uh, testing some of these things before we've gone live. Um, this week we're actually going to be um, piloting a uh, newer tool that's just come out. It's called AnyMeeting.com, and uh, it really is set up to work just like this Blackboard Collaborate 
webinar that we're using right now. And um, the, uh, the, the piece for us is to try and make it as simple as possible. And uh, we're going to try it. I'll probably blog about it later on this week on, uh, once we get some feedback from the parents on how it was for them. And, and any, we do have teachers that chime in as well on those meetings to participate. Um, so um, I see, Matt, you're chiming in with they're not free. Um, let me go back to the, the free part. Um, any meeting is completely free for up to 200 participants. Uh, there there are some ads on there, and that is one of the things that I, I do want to take a look at and see um, how that works. Uh, we started using Livestream.com. It's very similar to Ustream, but uh, the ads were not the most appropriate ones, um, so we always have to take a look at some of those. Um, but uh, the Ustream ads, um, we've had some Ford commercials and some video game commercials, um, but we haven't had anything that was not appropriate. And we always um, start our meetings by saying, um, you know, this is really an adult conversation. Um, I, we have no idea what ad is going to pop up on the screen. Um, and um, with uh, our budget awareness and being fiscally responsible, we want to try and find the, the tools that work for us and, and don't cost a lot of money, if anything. So, um, yes, sometimes we have to deal with some ads, but at the end of the day, um, are we better off um, communicating with those families as to not uh, playing or not attempting at all because of some ads? So. We're constantly working on those and, and simplifying and, and trying to reduce the ads in any way possible. Um, and any meeting is our next uh, venture this week is trying to utilize some of these tools and, and have something more set up like this webinar that we're using today. And Blackboard Collaborate is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, for us, that would cost a lot more money than we have in our budgets. Um, so we're looking at uh, what the next best thing is. Um, if you see the next link above that Home and School 2.0, it's called Poll Everywhere. And Poll Everywhere allows you to um, solicit feedback. So we've used Poll Everywhere in our Home and School meetings um, to have a parent ask them questions. Uh, I think that we used it after our uh, fall festival, and we asked the parents to um, give us feedback on what their favorite event was, um, what ideas we could uh, improve the event for the following year. And when parents can use a cell phone or they can use a computer with Poll Everywhere, again, that is a free tool, and they uh, populate the feedback in real time right on the screen. So um, it's really cool to sit in a meeting and you ask a question and boom, here comes all of the responses coming in, in real time. Um, and that, you know, they have bar graphs that uh, populate as you see that. So that's a really cool tool. Um, I didn't put it up here, but uh, SurveyMonkey, we use SurveyMonkey also to solicit, to solicit feedback. Uh, last year, I believe, um, our Homeless School Association was um, sending out some 30-second surveys. Um, just a couple questions just to get some feedback um, at the end of a week. Um, to try and make events better and, and really provide uh, from our, to our families. And that's, um, it's, again, that's uh, free. It's fairly easy to set up. Um, if you can fill out a Word document and, and um, you know, add uh, some bullets, then you can, you can certainly do that too. And um, again, it all stems back to the email distribution list where you can get a lot of this out in fairly uh, quick fashion. Uh, the Twitter, again, that's something we really started using uh, this year, um, sending pictures and updates from the school, um, also from events, um, and, you know, providing, we've provided some trainings now. We've provided trainings to parents, um, and we didn't have a whole lot of parents there. I think Twitter is very new, and it can be very complex and overwhelming if you're just getting started on that. Um, I certainly recommend that you de definitely get yourself a Twitter account and, and um, start taking a look at all the conversations that are happening in real time um, about, you know, conversations you care about, about education, about parenting, um, about best practice. Um, and and uh, I, I communicate with hundreds of other principals that are in my roles facing the same challenges I can, and, and um, I certainly don't have all the answers. Um, a lot of the tools that I'm showing you here I found on Twitter. Um, and like Lorna said, her and I met over the summer using Twitter, and, and it's great to know other people that are, that are working hard to do some of the same work that you're doing um, and uh, bounce ideas off each other. And I think Twitter has so many possibilities, and we're really not scratching the surface yet as, as educators as to how we can harness that. Um, 
I recommend you follow Eric Scheninger. He was the first uh, principal that I followed on Twitter. It's NMHS underscore principal. I'm going to put it in the window here. That's Eric Scheninger. He is, um, you know, the guru. He's um, busy writing books and, and traveling uh, the country, you know, sharing how he's using social media as a high school principal to engage teachers and students and parents and whatnot. Um, during my dissertation, um, I am going to, yes, George Kuros, wonderful principal to follow too. There, there are so many. Um, and I'm going to be studying Eric's school um, during my dissertation to see how he's communicating with parents. Uh, Lynn Hill School out in Lancaster, and also Chris Lehman School over uh, down in the Science Leadership Academy of um, Philadelphia. So um, those are uh, three principals I know are really utilizing, you know, blogs and, and Facebook and Twitter to really activate, um, you know, the tech tools um, that parents have access to, students, teachers in their school to build those partnerships. Um, text alerts. Uh, there are plenty of things uh, set up. There's one called Remind 101. Um, I think I have the link here. Let me go over to the web. All right. So this is really easy to set up. And we haven't done this with our school yet, I, I, with my parents. We've done it with our teachers. And we're trying to find a way to um, get folks to sign up for a text message um, to keep them in the loop of certain things, whether it's a snow day or it's, hey, this is due today. Or, um, you know, for our teachers, um, we have done this phone chain uh, for many years, and it seems like something gets messed up along the way every time we try to do it. Um, so uh, we're piloting this this year with teachers, and um, you know, this will be something that uh, um, Gwen, uh, you'll, you'll hear this at an upcoming home and school meeting on how we're utilizing this and maybe we can um, try to find a way to implement this sometime uh, next year. But again, this is not something that you pay for. This is something you sign up for and you set up. And um, with a click of a couple keystrokes and a click of the button, you can uh, send out an alert to anyone that's on your, on your list that's signed up. Um, just another, another free tool. All right, so... Go back to, there we go. All right. Um, and um, the mobile app, and we talked a little bit about that already. Um, that's just the most recent uh, tool that we've uh, put in place, and we're going to continue show, showing parents how to access that, how to utilize that, uh, how to get it up on their screen, because I think um, it's great if they have it bookmarked, but um, to have that little nap icon on the front of their cell phone screen, they can easily click on that, you know, let's say they're, the, you know, checking their email or whatnot. If they see that, they, they might be more likely to take a look at the calendar and take a look at any volunteer opportunities that are coming up or, or um, check out the, um, the most recent pictures from the event that happened last night. So I guess in all of these efforts, what we're trying to do is uh, bring our school into the virtual world that we find thousands and thousands of parents um, in already. And, um, you know, making us a natural piece there um, and, um, you know, hopefully supporting them in, in ways that um, they would like to be supported. And, and um, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot about um, supporting academics and whatnot. We use a couple different tools. One is studyisland.com at our school. Um, but realistically, looking at the budget, I'm not sure how long um, a tool like that is going to stay around because it does cost a significant amount of money. Um, but we, we utilize that tool to help get the standards in reading and mathematics in the state of Pennsylvania into the homes and have parents talking about the skills, um, the skills that our teachers are teaching during the school day and how they might support them at home. Um, so we are constantly generating um, tools for parents to use at home um, to support academics. Um, next week, our parents are going to be receiving an email because our teachers have taken a look at the data um, that they've collected from our students over the first, um, you know, third of the school year, and they've prioritized those study island skills that are tied directly to the Pennsylvania State Standards. And so they'll be sending home five skills in reading and five skills in math, and we'll be sending them home to parents. So when parents are supporting their kids going on a, a site like StudyIsland.com, they know where to focus. They know which skills their students, their children should be working on because those are the ones that are most challenging for their child. 
Um, so it's you know responding to data um, like that and giving parents some direction. I'm not just saying, hey, um, put your kid on the computer for an hour and 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 hopefully they work on reading. I think that's way too broad, and I think we have to uh, lend parents some um, opportunity and some direction and tell them how exactly they can support us, uh, whether it's coming in and, and working with a small group of students or it's or it's um, working more on inferences at home because this is something that kids their age have a real hard time and they need a little bit more practice and a little bit more real life um, connections to this. Um, yes, can I share, somebody said, can I share Twitter accounts of the principals to follow on my board? Yes. Um, I, I, will, I will tweet out um, the master education list of those lots of principals and parent-teacher people. There's a master Google document that's that floats around uh, Twitter every couple weeks. Uh, that there are so many great people to follow. So we'll um, we'll certainly get to that. Um, let's go t further here. Challenges to keep in mind. Um, again, taking a look at that access. How many people have emails? How many people utilize them? Um, how many email addresses are getting sent back to you because they were the wrong email address? Um, if you're using Google, they will send you a, a message back after you've sent your message that says, "Hey." Um, these seven people, um, it, didn't, it didn't go to their email address because maybe that's a wrong address. And following up on them and, and calling those parents and say, hey, I have your email address as this, this, and that, and it keeps getting sent back to me. Is this the right one or is it getting blocked? Is it going to your spam folder? So um, otherwise, those seven or eight that you get back, they, those parents are not being connected to what you're doing, even though you might think they are. Um, again, revisiting the translating options that you have, uh, whether you're using the free Google Translate or something else, making sure that you have that. Um, many of our schools these days, much more than um, years ago, um, have students that speak different languages at home. Um, some speak multiple languages at home. So being um, respectful and, and, and open to um, providing other resources. Um, going green isn't always the best method. Um, we make a call. Um, on whether something's going to go home hard copy or um, whether it's going to go home email only. And uh, I'm very flexible when it comes to that. Um, I think all of us um, are trying to save money and we're trying to um, get folks to um, utilize um, the computers more if they have access to them. But um, it isn't always the best method. The people don't always get the message. Maybe they don't read all their emails all the time. So if it's something that's really, really important, um, and, and all, of course, all of our events are important, but something that has a deadline, something that has that you want every single person to um, know about and, and to participate in, uh, then I think it's got to be a, a, a hard copy. Um, knowing the policies, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of great ideas available now, and there's more that I read about on Twitter and on the web every day, but um, your district has to have a vision for family engagement. You know, they have to um, really um, understand uh, the challenges that are in the community and um, understand um, what resources you already have. And a lot of us already have computers and whatnot and Internet capabilities in our schools. And, and um, what we're trying to do is access them and utilize them in, in, in as many ways as we possibly can to engage our families. Um, and, and sometimes you're going to be the only one with the passion and commitment to do something. And I, I think it's it, uh, that really tells you that you really need buy-in and you really need to you know, go back to that research and, and share with them um, different things. Maybe it's something from this presentation. Maybe it's some article that you, you pulled off the web from Eric Schenninger talking about how he's harnessing social media in his school, in his community. Um, and I think that the last poll question that everybody filled out, it was, I think it was 18% of you said, yes, there was a policy that allows you to use two-way communication in your schools. And that's one of my goals is to make that number go up. And I think in order for districts and schools and across the country to um, write policy that allows us to utilize this in a, in a, in a responsible way, and we always have to teach digital citizenship and role model digital citizenship, I think we have to show evidence across the country that this is actually improving partnerships. Um, so my current dissertation research, I'm, I'm working on that, and, and I hope to um, be working on this for um, a good portion of my career to, um, to try and help that. 
great. Thank you so much, Joe. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the session, but we hope that you'll stay on and continue the conversation. And if you have questions, please uh, continue to ask those, and we will come back to Joe in just a second. We want to let you know that Steve Argadon on Tuesday, the 24th, will be interviewing Lee Crockett. And on the 26th, he will be interviewing Cable Green. And on the 31st, David Lordshire. And on February the 2nd, we'll have a panel on personal learning profiles. So you'll want to make sure you mark your calendar for those events from Steve Hargadon. And we want to let you know that next Saturday there will not be a show so that you can attend either of the two virtual conferences from Discovery, the DENSICON, or the EDUCON conference that's going on in Philly. Either one will be great, and both, I think, are going to have recorded events. But regardless, we will not have a show next Saturday so that you can attend both either of those events. And on February 4th, I'm really excited about this. We're going to have a show on Evernote with William Stites, uh, talking about the different ways that you can use Evernote and Evernote with your student. So that's going to be a fantastic uh, show. So it'll be at the same time, so be sure you'll join us on February the 11th. Stephen Anderson, talking about who's Web 2.0 Anderson on uh, Twitter. And he'll be talking about TPAC, so you want to make sure that you join us at the same time on those Saturdays. And as soon as you exit the session today, a survey will open up in your browser automatically. And we hope that you'll give us feedback on today's session, as well as future guests and topics that you would like to see a session on. If for some reason it doesn't open, you can always go type in the URL, tinyurl.com slash cr20live survey. Or if you watch a recorded session, you can always type in that, sur that URL as well and fill out the survey. And you can request a professional development certificate by filling out that survey. And you can also email us at live at classroom20.com as well to request that survey, to request that certificate. We also have an iTunes U channel that you can subscribe to to get the MP3 and the MP4 video and audio collection. Then you can take us with you wherever you go on your i on your um, iPods or MP3, MP4 players. Also on the archives page, you can subscribe to the blog post and subscribe to the MP3 and MP4 recordings that way as well and play them directly from the web page. We want to extend a very special thank you, Joe, for your sharing today and your participation, as well as to Steve Hargadon. And just a reminder, we're coming up on our on the fifth anniversary of Classroom 2.0. And a special thank you to Weebly for providing the avenue for our website, as well as to everybody for contributing to our website today and to Blackboard collaborate for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And if you had a question during today's session that was overlooked or you would like to take the mic, we invite you now to click on the hand and we'll give you the mic. Or you can continue putting your comments and questions in the chat. And Joe will be happy to address your questions. And we will continue the recording if you happen to leave. And you can listen to the conversation later if you have to step away. When you fill out the survey, once you exit the session, 
the survey will automatically open in your browser and there's an area where it asks for your name and your email address and that's where you put the information for the professional development certificate and Peggy will send that to you. And Joe, how do you deal with unhappy parents uh, sending negative comments to Twitter? Well, I haven't had it happen yet. And um, if it did happen, I'd, uh, you know, I, I think that um, when you have an unhappy parent, whether it's um, online or it's in person, I think you really have to take a look at, um, you know, where you're not meeting the needs of that parent. Um, that's certainly an opportunity for me to engage a phone call to set up a meeting and talk with that parent face to face. Um, you know, we utilize uh, Twitter to get information out to parents to communicate with them to, you know, to share the great things going on in our school. Uh, if there's a conflict, um, we don't use technology to work through conflict. That's something that I think that you need eye contact, tone, um, and um, oftentimes a room and, and, a, and, a, and a meeting to show the parents that you care about them and you want to um, make sure that their needs are met and, and um, you know, meet with them and uh, whatnot. So we, we haven't had it happen yet. Um, you know, it, it may happen, and if it does, um, you know, I think that's an opportunity for us to um, have that parent become, get on board with us. And um, we need to grow and continue to grow, and, and we don't have all the answers. And I think that's important that um, we really don't, um, you know, we're learning as we go, and uh, we're responding to what our school in suburban Philadelphia needs, and it, those needs are different than every other school I know. Um, and um, I think it's just something that you have to kind of backtrack every once in a while and realize that there's going to be a, um, a growing pains along the way uh, with anything that you do. And, and if you're trying to think outside the box with something, that you really have to um, have that um, be a part of your planning and, and um, your meeting time with uh, parents at the next uh, home and school meeting or with whatever little strategic planning group that you have um, set up for your project. And that's a great point to take it offline at that time. Uh, somebody asked about, are you considering going one-to-one? -one? Uh, our technology um, committee is working on a number of ideas. Uh, right now, um, the big conversations in our school district are along the budget. Uh, we're the sixth largest school district in the state of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have 18 schools, so um, I, I'm not sure where our district is and, and with going with all that, um, but right now I'm trying to do as much as I can to, um, to engage my families and engage the students in the school that doesn't allow um, or doesn't take away from, from our budget. Great, and we'll get that live binder link again. I see Anne's question about um, principals being hesitate to participate online. Um, you know, for us, I, I think that we have to look at uh, online as. Um, just like if we were talking to a parent in person. And uh, we try not to change anything, and we try to make it as natural as possible. Uh, and everything we put online, I would be happy um, and, and confident in, in talking to if my boss was sitting in the, in, in the room, uh, you know, watching me work and watching me deal with parents. And, and I think that we are um, online. It's, it's um, you know, we're role modeling how this should be handled, you know, to, to students, to parents, to teachers, um, and, you know, talking you know, professionally. You know, we are professionals, and this is what we do, and we're very passionate about helping kids. And, um, you know, working with families is something that's imperative to that. And Amy asks, are there any strategy suggestions for initiating that shift to the two-way social media? I think it goes back to um, the common vision and mission that you set forth with your home and school association. And it goes back to the policies that are already set up in your school district or are not already set up in your school district and, and building those and, and sharing uh, the research and the successes of others. Um, 
that have light populations that are utilizing this and, and working with it. Um, it definitely takes buy-in. It definitely takes um, support from everyone around you. You have to have support from the administration. You have to have support from the principal. Uh, you have to have support from the parents. And you have to have um, support from the teachers. You know, and that all these things take time. And when you utilize technology, um, you have to provide the time to train each of these stakeholders. And um, that's something I still don't feel like we do enough. I'm still trying to take um, time um, and devote time to utilizing technology, devote time to having these nights where parents come and learn about Twitter. Um, on our family engagement website, if you look at the bottom left-hand side, there's a Twitter page. And that gives you an, uh, just an idea of uh, a night that we had a couple months ago that utilizes that utilized that tool, uh, Twitter, and just kind of broke it down. It takes a while to understand. It, take, it took me a few months over the summer uh, to really understand the, the potential of it. Um, and how to use it, how to use it, and and um, now I'm, I'm trying to use it, utilize it more on a daily basis. Definitely, just with any tool, it takes time and practice to become better and skilled in learning when and the best way to use it. So, what would you say to a school district that's hesitant on using mobile tech? and social media because they don't know how to regulate it? Um, I would say that they would need to learn how to regulate it. And I think that starts with the district administration and the tech director of technology. And um, there's a couple, there's two sides to the director of technology. One is the instructional technology leadership side. The other side is the network side and, and, and making sure that um, you know, everyone stays safe, and there are certain websites that are you're allowed to be on, and certain websites that are blocked for one reason or another. And I think that has to come with the the mission and the vision of the school district, and uh, all of those building blocks have to be set up before you can do what you need to do. Definitely. Uh, Gwen just talked about Twitter. Um, she wasn't like a, most parents. She's like, how am I going to use this? And even teachers, when we did a teacher session, they said the same thing. How am I going to use Twitter? You know, I think that's a, um, I'm not sure if you've had a Twitter um, session on Classroom Live. That, that might be a great session to get more people in, involved, but it, it does take time. It takes um, seeing, you know, how to use it, seeing a chat and what that looks like, um, identifying the anatomy of a tweet, you know, from the username to the link that you share to the information, and all of that in 140 characters. Um, and I, I think it's it's very important that um, as you hear about these tools to really see what it looks like. Kathy Schrock is a wonderful resource, and she has a whole Twitter page to be helpful. So does um, Jerry Blumengarden, Cyberian Man. Um, mm -hmm. Also, um, Steven Anderson, Web 2.0 Classroom. He is um, a guru, and I've again I've leaned on as many people as I could as I've found on Twitter. I, I meet more, more people every week that help me do what I do, and um, you know I'm no pro. I, I just I'm a I try to be a learner, and I try to learn as much as I can from what's already out there. And you know Twitter has more free professional development than than I've ever seen. Absolutely, and we have done Twitter for teachers and Twitter for educators sessions, so they are in our archives. So that's one great thing that people that's can great. go back and look at all of our great resources. And um, yes, Cyberman was uh, joined us last week and shared some great resources with us. Um, but I can't recommend Twitter enough. Whenever I have a question about something. I'll go to Twitter and ask it, and in a few minutes, I'll have my answer. You know, I've, I've had blog problems, and a person from Canada helped me and uh, helped me solve a, a very complicated problem in a matter of minutes. So that's been very helpful. So are there any more questions or comments for Joe before we let him go and let him enjoy the rest of the weekend? Info on the mobile app. 
um, I believe I shared the link. It's WebMobi. Is that correct, Joe? Yes. Yes, WebMobi.com. And you, do you have to create the and follow the steps on the iPhone? No, you don't create it on the phone. You create it on a laptop or desktop. Okay. And then once you save it, then they give you the link to it. Okay. And you can go back in there and make adjustments all the time. Once you create it, it's not finished. It's just a it's a work in progress, and you can save it at any time, take things away, put them back on there. Um, but uh, WebMobi, I looked around at some other options, and some were just very confusing. And um, I don't mm -hmm. know HTML code. I, that's not my my specialty. And this seemed to be something that was really um, easy um, to to learn and to just follow the steps and keep it simple. And really, we started with just five really links on there, you know, with the um, calendar and with the contact. And we wanted to make sure that we put a spot on there so parents can um, report bullying and whatnot. Um, and uh, just just to kind of highlight the main pieces to our school, and uh, there are certain mobile apps that will take your whole website and they will condense it for you. Some of these people charge five, six, seven hundred dollars to do this, mm -hmm. and uh, we just don't have five, six, seven hundred dollars in a budget we can spend. So um, it really didn't take very long, um, and um, I, I um, it really helped me think about how I how our, my teachers could utilize this. Instead of making that board at the end of a unit, maybe a kid could make a mobile app. Absolutely. You know, sharing all of these great things that they learned about during their um, Native American unit. Um, so there's really a lot of capabilities and options for that. Um, but definitely take try it out. You know, if you have any kind of website at all for school, and if you have a website, you can certainly have a mobile app. It's just really um, following directions and. Um, you know, I think for the uh, for the if you have a YouTube account, all you do is enter your YouTube username and you hit su submit, and it automatically embeds it in for you. You know, so there's not a lot of tiny pieces that you have to put in place there. Well, what were those two seventh graders? They created some math app. Um, they sold it for ninety nine cents and have made just huge amounts of money. I can't remember the name of the math. No, I didn't see Carolyn's question. I'd be happy to do that. I think she asked about doing a mobile app workshop. Okay. Does Mobi app have ads? Does Web Mobi have ads? Uh, is Gwen still on the line? Yes. Let's let's ask one of my parents who who's used this app. What kind of ads have you seen on it, Gwen? None. Oh, that's good. And that's just, I mean, Gwen has an iPhone, I have an iPhone. I'm not sure what other people are seeing or, um, on it. But again, this isn't an app you're, you're going to download from the iTunes store. This is really a web, um, web enabled website, a mobile enabled website. It's mm -hmm. a web app. Mm -hmm. You know, so you'll get that link and you'll put it on there and you, you'll follow it. It'll work like the other ones, but you know, it, it takes a half second as opposed to in, it's inside the, the app. So you're basically converting your website into a mobile version of your website. Right. 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 So that your phone can read it in a mobile version. Right. Right. It definitely doesn't include everything on the website. Again, this is the you know the first version. We wanted to get something out there that was basic, so then next time that we release a an update, we can you know PR it and walk people through it, um, show it more at the home and school meeting you know coming up, and and um, really show people how to utilize this. The last link on it is a share this app. 
So if, you know, um, mom or dad have it and they're like, oh, you know, I got to make sure that my, you know, grandma has this or make sure that um, my my husband has this or, or someone has this, then you can quickly email it, the link to, to someone using that last link on there. Because a lot of mobile browsers can't read all of the the information that's on the, a regular a browser page. Right. Any other questions? Any other questions before we let Joe go for the day? Looks like things are wrapping up. But we want to thank you, Joe, so much. This has been fantastic. Great information. Definitely going to have to go back and uh, check the chat log and the uh, recordings. And we want to remind everybody to uh, join us back in February when we're going to have Evernote as our next session. So we will see you back in two weeks at the same time, same place. So uh, take care, everybody. Have a great two weeks, and we will see you online. Take care.